there's a saying, marketers ruin everything. And when it comes to proximity marketing, well, that actually was true. With the Android phone, Google had a release that allowed marketers to use beacons, that is small devices that detect when a mobile device is nearby that could send a message to that mobile device without it opting in. As you can imagine, marketers ruined it. Devices started getting spammed and by the end of 2018, in December, Google shut that program down. But it paved the way for something that we benefit from today, proximity marketing, geofencing, geoconquesting, things that work really, really well today when your market is at a physical location and you want to reach them with your advertising. I'm gonna talk through those things in this video today. Geofencing is an intent-based marketing strategy. When a person walks into a store, when a person attends an event, when a person goes and visits some place, they're doing it for a reason. And if that reason matches what an advertiser is trying to get in front of, then you have a great way of connecting this offline world where people physically go to places with digital online advertising using programmatic ads. The other thing that this does, it allows us to measure foot traffic, conversion zone tracking. We know if somebody goes into a place shortly after seeing an ad, there is a conversion from seeing that ad to that visit. And we can actually track that to see how well a location is doing by doing what's called a geofence around their location. So let's get into how this all works because this is really exciting. The most advanced location-based advertising uses geometric shapes around a map to plot exactly where you want to obtain the recipients of your ads. The way it works is when somebody walks into that geometric shape, their device, their phone, if it has location enabled sensors turned on, is sending out information with their GPS coordinates to their service provider. Programmatic advertisers work with the data providers that obtain this data and are able to send ads to that person based on where they were physically from that point to up to 30 days later. Essentially, geofence technology allows marketers to use pinpoint accuracy to target people based on where they've been and where they've visited. This gets especially interesting around events. Say you have a sporting event or a trade show, something where there are a group of people congregating around a similar purpose or around a similar interest. And you are a company that wants to sell your goods or services to those people. Anyone who attended that event would start seeing your ads from that point to 30 days later. Or say you have a sandwich shop, and that sandwich shop is around the corner from some large office buildings where people work. And you wanna make sure that everybody knows that there is a special going on in your sandwich shop. What you would do is draw a map around the location where those people are, those buildings, those office buildings, those hospitals, where those people work. And you'll run your ads to anybody who is in that location for a certain period of time. Now I mentioned earlier a concept called conversion zones. A conversion zone is what measures foot traffic. Imagine I draw a box around a store. And what we wanna do is see, are the ads that we've sent out increasing foot traffic? Well, if we have a target, a fence around that store, we know who has gone into there. We know how many people have gone at any given time. And we can determine based on the data that we have if our foot traffic is increased because of a campaign we're running. This concept of conversion zone optimization, converting online to offline visits, is a really powerful way of using geofencing to help your brand promote itself. So how does this work? What are the steps? First, I set up geofences. I draw geometric shapes around locations where I want to target visitors. When a person enters into one of those shapes, the ID of their device is captured. Now this requires something to be said. It requires their device to have location services enabled. However, 90% of the devices have this turned on. Most people don't turn it off. Once that's happened, on their device, when they open up a browser 
or they launch an app that has advertising enabled. The programmatic ads, that is the ads that are sent on an auction model, will appear in their browser or in those apps for your brand. And you can choose how long you want those ads to show. They can show up to 30 days after the person visited the location. Now I mentioned event targeting, but there's another real powerful use of geofencing. That's called geoconquesting. It's essentially putting a geofence around your competitor. I want to make sure that everybody who visits my competitor instantly sees my ad. Imagine this. Imagine you uh, run a car dealership and you do geoconquesting against the competitor across the street. So when somebody walks into that car dealership, you want to make sure that your ads start showing up for that visitor. Every time somebody visits your competitor, that person, when they open up their browser or when they open up one of the many apps that run ads, will then see the ads for your location. Then you can pull people over. Maybe you have an incentive. Maybe you have a promotion that you know is better than your competitor's promotion. You would geofence or geoconquest your competitor and send the ad for the better promotion to those people visiting your competitor so that they then say, oh wait, there's a better deal over here. I'm gonna go across town or I'm gonna go across the street. That's how geoconquesting works. Now there's another technology that you've probably heard a lot about and those are called beacons. And back when Google created the platform with the Android device where you could get notifications sent directly, thousands and thousands of beacons were deployed. And what these are is just little tiny devices that emit whatever you want them to send out based on who crosses in. Well, since the Android disabled that, it didn't mean that these went away. It just means the model of how they were used changed. When you use beacon technology, a beacon works with an app. And the perfect example is something like a Starbucks. If you have the Starbucks app, you use it to pay, you use it to get rewards, and you have it enabled, every time when you get in a certain proximity to a Starbucks, you're gonna get a pop-up on your device that says, visit Starbucks and get this new special. There's a promotion, whatever it is that they wanna share with you. The way they do that is they have beacons set up at the Starbucks the beacons tie to the Starbucks app so that when you are in a certain distance from that beacon, the app knows it. And beacons work really well with organizations, businesses, any entity where they have an app that their user base is willing to install because it's, it's, it requires a step on that person's behalf to install it. Another example would be if you had a trade show, you might install an app for that specific show. Well, once done, you could have beacons all around the show targeting you because you have the app installed and the app itself is what shows the ad. The beacon recognizes that you're nearby. The app displays the ad. And you can get really creative with these things. You can create beacon ad combinations for uh, franchises, for large chains, for companies that uh, have many locations, a beacon app combination works really well. And these are two very different things. So when you think of proximity marketing, you wanna think of it as two different solutions. One is the geofence model, which doesn't require any beacons, doesn't require any hardware. It uses the location associated with the device and programmatic advertising. And then you have the beacon app model where they're intended to pair together beacons emitting something that is consumed by the app and then presented to you. Proximity marketing is an amazing tool for a marketer to use today. Used judiciously, it works very well. As with any advertising platform, you have to be careful about overusing it and spamming your audience, much like happened in the days with the Google Android and beacons. But overall, it's a really great tool. If you want to know more about this, send me a note, put a note in the comment. Or if you have a different way of doing using Beacon technology that I haven't mentioned, or proximity marketing that I haven't mentioned, please put that in the comments. As always, I appreciate a like, I appreciate a share, and if you're interested in seeing more videos about digital marketing and, and building businesses, subscribe to this channel and click the bell. Thanks for your time today. Look forward to seeing you on the next video.